Okay, hi. Uh, my name's Tom, Tom Clendon. Um, I'm a lecturer for FGMS, and I'm here to talk to you about the P2 exam for December 13. As you'll know, it's a very time-pressured exam, so one of the things that you will benefit from in the days leading up to the exam is looking, again, at past examination questions, practicing them under exam conditions, as well as reading around the subject. Question number one in section A is compulsory. It's a 50 mark question. It will either be a group statement of financial position or a group statement of comprehensive income or a group statement of cash flow. I don't know which it's going to be. You really cannot take any chances. You have to be prepared for all three. As anybody who's been on any of my courses knows, you really have to be prepared because you'll be vastly exposed if the wrong topic comes up. For the last two, two and a half years, the examiner has focused very much on statement of financial position, which is very core. And I sort of hope that he does ring the changes this time, and I sort of hope that it will be cash flow. But look, there's no money-back guarantee on that. Remember also within question number one, there will be some other accounting issues, and particularly uh, an ethical issue being examined. Other accounting issues that might fit in with group accounts you know, might include a bit on related parties, perhaps, as a long shot. Or exactly what is a subsidiary? You know, the definition of control under uh, IFRS 10 is, 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 is a possibility. So don't forget the ethics. Uh, don't just regurgitate the ethical principles. Make sure you try and apply them. It is, of course, unethical to be a creative accountant, to deliberately manipulate the accounts. And I think it's unethical for a company to make a large amount of profit, but to organise its affairs so it actually pays no tax. But, I don't know. Section B. Section B will contain three questions, all for 25 marks, and you have a choice. You only have to do two. Use your reading time well. Use your reading time to read Section B and to make a decision as to which question you are not going to be doing. Question two and question three are normally fairly similar. They're, they deal with a range of accounting issues. And very much from an application perspective, you've got to have quite a good technical knowledge of the accounting standards. If numbers are examined in question two or question three, then traditionally these questions are answered by students slightly better. So that may influence your choice. It's very difficult to tip exactly which accounting standards are going to come up in question two, are going to come up in question three. But a couple that spring to mind might include deferred tax. Deferred tax is one of those areas where the numbers are not that difficult and you could be asked to examine and discuss an accounting issue like impairment or revaluation or share-based payments and then on each occasion ask to think about the deferred tax implications. Uh, another accounting area which is perhaps worthy of discussion is financial instruments, particularly in the distinction between debt and equity. You know, when you're raising finance, uh, your creative accountant will want to have the classification of equity to minimise the gearing. Um, and so how that actually works with, you know, redeemable preference shares and, and that kind of thing is an interesting area. So make sure you have a look at that as well. Question four is on current issues. Uh, and, you know, looking at the examinable documents, leases, um, impairment of financial assets, revenue recognition are all, are all there, all examinable. And what is lovely is that they've all been the subject of some articles on uh, some articles that have been published uh, by the examining team and by myself uh, on Student Accountant on the ACCA website. Make sure you have another look at these. If you want a long shot on a current issue, perhaps, looking at an accounting standard which doesn't work, or, or in practice is having difficulty, 
maybe impairment. There's a lot of suggestions that uh, in some economies where there isn't such tight uh, regulation that uh, less impairment losses are being recognized through sort of over generous views on value in use uh, and the problem with a lack of proper disclosures about management assumptions. Anyway, it's a full-on paper. You will have to be working flat out for three hours. Exam technique will come to the fore. Be neat. Reference your workings. Good luck with your examinations, guys.